today we are going to be reading chapter 28 and we are going to be reading it where there is a bunch of lawnmowers. So there's this one and then there's two there for sure. I don't know what that other thing is. Then there's a weed whacker and out of all of those things only the weed whacker works. <laughs> so um, it's kind of funny. I don't think my husband would find it very funny but that's where we're going to be. Okay chapter 28 we just heard the um, super emotional chapter of Trevor um, being stabbed and Reuben was there. Um, so let's find out what happens next. This chapter is from Chris, who was the newspaper reporter. He lay under the covers watching TV. Breaking news from Masterado, California, the anchor announced to open the 11 o'clock news. This can't be it. Not with the stone face on the newsmen. This is not about Trevor. This is him thinking to himself. Trevor McKinney, the boy who met the, with the President of the United States earlier today, has been hospitalized tonight in Astorado, not far from his family's home. Witnesses say the boy suffered a single stab wound as he tried to intervene in a mugging on the street outside a restaurant. A hospital spokesperson reports that Trevor was admitted in critical condition and is undergoing emergency surgery. No further word on his condition is available at this time. Chris sat up straight up in bed. President Clinton tonight expressed deep concern for Trevor's condition. The president had issued the following statement, quote, it seems unimaginably sad that a boy who was just honored for his good deeds and his dedication to promoting kindness should be targeted in a senseless act of violence. My heart goes out to Trevor and his family and my family will say a prayer for tonight for his speedy recovery. We hope the rest of America will join us in prayer for Trevor's well-being. The screen filled with the tape of Trevor's earlier meeting with the president. Chris blinked feeling empty. He rolled out of bed, looking for a cordless phone, finally located it on the living room. Sorry, in the living room. He punched long distance information, 805 area code, asked for a listing for hospitals closest to the Astorado area. He hit it on the first try. The admission desk said, yes, Trevor was there. He was in surgery. The woman punched him for his information, oh sorry, punched his information into the computer and it came up. He's listed as critical. That's all you can tell me? For the present time, yes, I'm sorry. We are getting a lot of calls about him. Where's his mother, Arlene McKinney? She must be right there, right? I'm sorry, sir, I can't say. Could you page her for me? A pause, an audible sigh. He heard a click on hold. He bit the inside of his lip and waited. Then a voice on the line. Yeah, who's this? Arlene. It's Chris, Arlene, Chris Chandler. Oh, Chris. Her voice sounded tight and rough. What happened, Arlene? Oh, Chris, I don't know. It all happened so fast. He got stabbed. He saw some guys getting beat up. He tried to mix in. Is he gonna be okay? They won't tell us, Chris. Her voice dissolved into sobs. He's been in surgery for over two hours. They just won't tell us a thing. They say we'll know when they do. I gotta go, Chris. The dial tone rang in his ear. He clicked the off button on his phone. Arlene's front lawn had become a sea of cameras and news teams by the time Chris arrived. He had to park in her driveway behind the Dodge Dart. All the street parking had been taken by the television crew's vans. He cut sideways across her front grass. She's not talking to anyone, a reporter said with a stiff, perfect blonde haircut, as she told, um, told him as he stepped onto the front porch. He rapped hard on the front door. Arlene, it's me, Chris. The door peeked open and Reuben drew him inside by one elbow. Arlene lay on the couch on her side, a glass of water and a box of Kleenex close by. I wish they'd go away, she said. 
Can you make him go away, Chris? He sat down on the couch beside her. She patted his hand. Everybody cares about this story, Arlene. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen people mobilize over one story like this before. It's not a story, Chris. It's happening. And we still don't know if he's going to be okay. I know. I'm sorry. That's just the way I talk. I can't talk to all of them. It's too much. I know, Arlene. I know. Look, you don't have to talk to anybody. But that Citizen of the Month segment is going to run tomorrow. With an update, of course. If there's anything you want to say, I can get one cameraman in here. That's it. Me and one camera. You don't have to do it, but if there's something you want to tell the public about this, they really want to hear it from you. She sat up, wiped her eyes, and sniffled. Like what? I don't know. Anything you want to say. Well, I could just say there's a vigil tomorrow in front of City Hall. We thought maybe even a candlelight march after, you know, if people are interested. If there are people out there who care about Trevor and want him to pull through, they can come and bring a candle, that sort of thing. Yeah, that would be great. Chris felt tears forming, threatening just behind his eyes. I'll go get a cameraman. Okay, so this is going to be hard. This is another hard chapter. But you're going to make a prediction. It's kind of an inference. Is Trevor going to make it? Use the clues that you know. Okay, he was stabbed. He's in the hospital. He's in critical condition. With the newspaper reporters and all these chapters, we saw from the diary of Trevor. Trevor never had his own chapter like Reuben does or like Arlene. He had his own say by having from the diary of Trevor Put those clues together and make a prediction and I'm sorry okay well we'll got two more chapters to read